Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. Three witnesses in heaven. First, the Father. I find these subjects so important. God makes it so unquestionably clear through his scriptures and by his spirit in us today that he himself bears witness of the Lord Jesus Christ that Jesus is not just any other man, that he is not just another Jewish man that happened to be prophetic, that happened to do some miracles, that happened to symbolize some of the things written in. No, no, no. Jesus is God in human flesh revealed to us. Jesus is the creator of heaven and earth. It is the Father himself who bears witness of him. Jesus said in John chapter 5, you have gone to John, for he was a burning and shining light who bore witness of the truth. And you delighted in the light that he bore, and John bore witness of me. But I have a greater witness than John. It is the Father himself who bears witness of me. It is the witness of the Father. We may believe what people say about things, but God, and you cannot escape this in eternity. All of us have to appear before God and give an account of ourselves. Have we believed what he has said upon of his son, Jesus Christ? Or have we rejected what he said about his son? and made him to be a liar. John writes about that right here. And it is so essential today that we believe the witness of the Father. <clears throat> Jesus, as I said to you, is not just another man like any other man. It says in John chapter 1, verse 18, and I find these verses very powerful, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, begotten means brought forth from, the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, the intimate presence of the Father, He has declared Him. He has made the invisible God visible in the body He prepared for Him. As it would say in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. And as it is written in the scroll of the book of me, I have come to do your will, O God. It's a phenomenal chapter. And if you look at, for example, let me read it from this classic translation. If you go to Hebrews chapter 1, right, and the, the witness of the Father. There's three in heaven that bear witness. The Father is the first one we're talking about. And here we see that it says in verse 3 that Jesus is the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine. He is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. Jesus is not just any man. He is the perfect manifestation of the Father. In John 17, verse 5, Jesus is praying and he says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Jesus my friends, never was an angel. Jesus never had some prehistoric pre-creation. No, Jesus has always been God from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God, Moses writes in Psalm 90. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13, verse 8. He is glory in the Father, the Father in Him, before the foundation of the world, before anything ever was created. And look at Philippians 2, 
verse 6, please. Philippians 2, verse 6. Here it is. Who, although, listen now, talking about Jesus, who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained, but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant, slave, in that he became like man and was born a human being. Jesus became one with us in our human nature, so to make us one with himself in his divine nature. This is an incredible revelation, dear friends. His divinity, his incarnation, that he became man and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, John chapter 1, verse 14 says. And when Jesus came into the world, and then you could see how God predestined him in Abraham, in the seed of Abraham. Galatians really teaches about that. In David, the throne of David, and, and, and the Bible talks a lot about this, that on the moment that he became 30, when David was anointed king, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And as he came up from the water, so he went underwater, as he came up from the water, he was praying. And while he was praying, the heaven opened and the Holy Spirit in bodily manifestation descended and remained upon him. Yes. And the voice from heaven was heard saying, you are my son, in you I am well pleased. It is the Father himself before all of creation bearing witness that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus says to Peter in Matthew chapter 16, upon this foundation I will build my church. What foundation? Upon this rock I will build my church. What rock? What foundation? Christ himself is the rock. 1 Corinthians 10 shows us that Jesus is the rock and that Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. There is no other uh, foundation that anyone can lay than that which is laid by God himself, which is Christ. And it is the Father in us bearing witness of his Son that makes us part of his body, his church, his temple, his house, the pillar and the ground of truth, as Paul would call it. The foundation of the revelation of the truth in the world today is the church. It is the constant revelation. Jesus is at the Father's right hand, revealing the glory of God in the church, the body of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are that temple. We are that body. It says it right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. No, chapter 6, please. It says, do you not know in verse 19 that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you're not your own? You were bought at the price. You were bought with the blood of Jesus. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirits, which are God. We are the temple of God's Spirit, where God in us consistently, unceasingly is bearing witness of His Son in us, the hope of glory, the new life giving way to the Father. How do you come to God? Through Jesus Christ. There's no other name given unto man by which we must be saved, Peter says in the book of Acts. And it's Jesus, His life in us, that is the new life giving way for us to draw near to the Father. It is the Father who gives you to Jesus by revealing Jesus in you. 
Remember, Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said there in Matthew 16, blessed are you, son of Jonah, for no human being but my father has revealed this in you. And upon this rock, I will build my church. The church belongs to Jesus. I'm a pastor, but it doesn't belong to me. I'm not the master. No, I'm just a little pastor. Jesus is the true pastor. He's the true shepherd. It is he who the Father has given us to. The Father has given us to Jesus so that through Jesus we all may draw near to the Father. Through Jesus we're all reconciled to the Father. Through Jesus we can come to the Father holy and without blaming his love, acceptable and well-pleasing according to the riches of his grace because in Jesus we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Redemption means salvation, deliverance from the nature of sin is in Christ. You see, in this flesh, friends, we all have sin. It's part of this flesh nature. That's why it dies. But we, our spirit and our soul, are now made alive with Christ, Ephesians chapter 2. And we are now alive with Christ. His life in us makes us alive to God. His life cannot sin. Therefore, Christ himself is the freedom from sin. All you have to do to live free from sin is get to know Jesus and believe upon him. How can you know Jesus? By hearing the gospel about him. You want to go to a church where they preach about Christ. They preach about Jesus. They open the scriptures and talk about Jesus. When Jesus in Luke chapter 24 was appearing to his disciples after his resurrection in his resurrected body. And you could see a difference between his resurrected body and his glorified body. In Luke 24, you see him in his resurrected body. In Revelations, you see him in his glorified body. You see him in his heavenly reward of what he achieved on earth that he now has in heaven to be able to give to us. But in Luke 24, they saw him. And he says, I'm not just a ghost that has no flesh and bones. And he ate some honey and some broiled fish in their presence. And still they could not connect with it because it was too wonderful for them. So then look what it says. And he said to them, these are the words in verse 44 that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of this now. This is the wonder. That's why we need to preach from the Bible and we need to preach about Jesus Christ and the wonder of his person. Paul says in Philippians chapter three, he says, I used to boast myself in all the things that I achieved after the order of the law but none of that gave me the kind of righteousness that I have now come to live in through faith in Jesus. And I have now suffered the loss of all these things I boasted in, in achieving in my own strength for the more excellent knowledge of Jesus Christ, the surpassing worth, the supreme advantage, the overwhelming preciousness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, to have a righteousness, not of the works of the law, but that which comes from God through faith in Jesus Christ, a perfect right standing that Jesus has in heaven with the Father, that he now reveals in us through the Holy Spirit, that we may have perfect righteousness, peace, and joy with the Father, because that is the rule of his kingdom and power in all of us. And Paul understood that it was through the scriptures that our understanding are enlightened concerning Jesus, that the Father himself 
from heaven bears witness of his Son in us and among us. The Apostle Peter, remember in 2 Peter, I'll close with this. In 2 Peter, the Apostle Peter, he is talking about how he was there on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he says in verse 16 of 2 Peter chapter 1, We did not follow cunningly the vice of fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Matthew chapter 17, Luke chapter 9 tells us about how Jesus took Peter, John and James up by themselves on the high mountain and he was transfigured before them while he prayed. Luke chapter 9 talks about while he prayed and they beheld his glory. They saw the majesty of his splendor of God in him, in him, in God. And he says, we heard the voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Now look at this. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed that you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of a private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Do you see? Oh, how I love this. How I love this. Folks, stay with the scriptures. Jesus Christ is the living word. And it is through him that the scriptures are opened up to us and in us so that we may know the only true living God in Jesus Christ and come into a personal relationship with our loving Heavenly Father through Jesus who is our reconciliation and it is from heaven that the Father himself bears witness to us and in us and through us that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the power of God unto salvation, the new life giving way to the Father, our righteousness, our peace, our joy, our sanctification, our redemption. Oh my goodness, the riches, the riches that we have from the Father in Christ are endless, are everlasting, are continuously coming into us by the Holy Spirit so that as He is with the Father, Father, so we may be in this world. Amen. Have a good day.